Thank you, Abraham. Yeah. Um, I feel like I, I feel love and connection, um, but I also feel kind of a desperate, incessant um, need to kind of make everyone okay. With, you know, I know it yeah. doesn't make any sense, but it... Well, it makes a lot of sense because you're a born uplifter. Esther watched Jerry every single day, sometimes more than once in a day. The most often phrase that she heard from him was, when I interact with someone, it is my intention to either leave them where they are or uplift them. But I never want anyone to be diminished as a result of knowing me. Well, what that is, is that's a deeply rooted awareness that you came to help people find their satisfaction. And you live in a world where most people are looking for it in all the wrong places. And that worries you. It worries you. But don't be worried because there isn't anything to really worry about. Because ultimately they will find their connection. Do you want to give us a little more detail and we'll romp around the yeah, marble bag? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, director of an ashram and um, there's it's kind of a the quality in me is a little bit merciless with myself in it I think in some way and it's I feel like it's um, well untruthful what do you mean way. by merciless um, maybe the way I matter in it is inappropriate I don't matter quite enough in it I think it's kind of making myself smaller in a lot of the situations and I think it's um, it's not helpful to other people to, to do that. Give and us more. Merciless. What do you mean, merciless? I mean, like, um, maybe I expect quite a bit out of myself, but I also, I don't feel like it's ultimately kind to me or even to them in a way to be so desperate in it. To, like, why do I need them to be okay well, for me? what you're expressing to us is what we've been talking about all day here today. And what it is is... You don't want to be a reactor to their bag of marbles because you know that when you focus upon what is, you can't be an inspiration or any help in getting them to really what they're wanting. And yet you've got yourself in physical terms between a rock and a hard place because you're expected to be um, kind and considerate and aware and sympathetic to where people are but it goes against the laws of the universe as you're understanding them to be so you kind of don't know which way to go but your inner being will guide you it's like sometimes it hasn't really happened today but every now and again we'll point at someone and someone will come running up and we'll say it's not you and the someone or often a lot of people in the crowd will go oh like oh Abraham that was really a terrible sad and mean thing for you to do to that person and we look at the crowd and say really have you heard nothing from us we are not going to argue for anyone's limitations we are not going to encourage you to argue for limitations and there's a part of you that understands that that's not helping them so many people when they do nice things for people they don't mean to do it but sometimes the message that they send is I do this for you for I see you cannot do it for yourself and that is disempowering and that is the tug of war that you've got going on inside of you Esther handed a $20 bill out the window of her car as she was turning left on a busy street the other day and as the man approached she just said have a good day have a good day she didn't want to make it some big oh here you are homeless and hungry and stinky <laughs> and I have a bag full of money and I would like to give you from my worthiness into your unworthiness $20 and she loved how quickly he snatched it and ran away <laughs> because it's just $20 and it's just a moment in time that you're sharing and he's got an inner being too everybody that you're interacting with has an inner being everyone that you're interacting with has the potential of aligning with their full power so your work as an uplifter as a mentor as a teacher as a healer 
you are all of those things is to demonstrate through the clarity of your example what being in alignment with who you really are is and you're not in alignment with who you really are in a sympathetic pose you're just not but you are in alignment with who you really are in a compassionate moment and what's the difference compassion means you're in alignment with your source and looking at them because when you're in alignment with your source and looking at them then they're benefiting by your gaze but if you are sympathetic to their plight rather than in alignment as your inner being is with what they're asking for whole different thing hello it's a pleasure I'm out of breath I'm so excited okay so um me and my new friend Brianna we want to do what you do I would love to be a teacher of the law of attraction and well, the I law know, of attraction uh, is the teacher of the law of attraction okay <laughs> you can hardly miss it <laughs> but as you demonstrate it teach to the clarity of your example yeah Esther stood here just now and like she always does she said as she was getting ready for us Abraham I want to speak clearly your words and then she said I am step three because she knows you're doing the asking Abraham's doing the answering and her job is to just let it flow which means she never tried to make it happen don't try it's exactly right for you just let it yeah so I um I listened to your recordings from a long time ago when you did, you and Jerry did um, the recordings on some Apple Music for me. But I have the Adriana, I see and draw to me those beings who seek enlightenment through the process. And we will enjoy the process together. So I did say that a few times. and But I feel like it happened. And I was at a point where I was channeling my inner being I, f I felt the flow for sure. I felt for sure, the power. for sure I f for sure I for sure Abraham I felt it here's our only encouragement this is the only thing that you need to know that you are not absolutely clear about we're glad that you're talking about more than one of you involved in this Esther had the advantage of Jerry who was always queued up with another question he was step one and Abraham always queued up with the answer to Jerry's question and Esther knew what her role was to not try to answer the question not have a dog in the fight about the question not try to make it a better question she knew what her role was to relax and allow it to flow well that's easy when there's a Jerry and an Esther because the vibration of the question and the vibration of the answer are very different vibrations a problem and a solution are different frequencies aren't they just like what we were talking about earlier about anger and revenge those are different frequencies questions and answers are different frequencies so if you are on your own in a situation like that you're going to want to have some definition of time between when you're chewing on the question and when you're allowing the answer because if the question is really active within you while you try to receive the answer you're not step three you're not in the state of allowing so this will be a breeze for you you were born for this okay. <laughs> I do have one more question uh, I agree so was Esther and we'll tell you why she had not made her mind up about anything she was bipping along living happily ever after she was easy going she didn't have an opinion she never pushed against anything not a fighter always a lover so she was ready so the first moment she sat to meditate it clicked right in now you are a fighter <laughs> she so knows you, me so well <laughs> yes. so that's why we're emphasizing don't try to make something happen yeah you're gonna do this and you're gonna love it and it's gonna evolve and it's gonna be easy but take it easy you didn't come to change the world it doesn't need to be changed or to fix it it's not broken you came for the pleasure of facilitating clarity yeah okay my next question is um, are you familiar with the healing phase like when your childhood is 
was what it was. So you, are be, you have become who you are based off who you have been conditioned and programmed to be over your life experience. Well, we would say it a different way. There's all kinds of ways of saying it, but we would say most people offer most of their vibration in response to what they are observing. So that's perfectly logical. What you observe causes you to offer a vibration. The vibration you offer causes you to attract more. So then you believe that this is the way it goes. It takes a little more explanation, which is where people like you and Esther come in, where you can explain the subtle nuances of all of that. Because most people just observe and create and then create more of what they're observing and then fight with each other over what's right and wrong about what they've all created. But that doesn't feel good to any of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my question would be, um, how would you more so lay new pipes as opposed to be who you've always been? By being really happy about who you now are and be thrilled with everything that happened that caused you to be who you now are. Thank you. Really good. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next